Hey what's happening guys, welcome to your 14th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about dictionaries. So I've got some good news, we're going to learn about another data type, yay! And this data type is called a dictionary. And a dictionary is a mapping type, which means basically it's a set of key value pairs. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, you're going to think it looks a lot like JavaScript object notation. So let's just dive into the interactive shell and start creating a dictionary. So to run the shell, I'm going to type Python, and then we're going to create this new dictionary. And we're going to store it in a variable called ninja underscore belts. And that's going to equal a dictionary. Now, the notation to create a dictionary are these curly braces right here. So again, very much like JavaScript object notation. Then what we do is we pass in a series of key value pairs. So, for example, in this case, the key is going to be a ninja name and the value is going to be the belt color that they have. So the key is going to be in quotations and these can be single or double, doesn't really matter. And this is going to be crystal. And then we do a colon. And then again, because we're using the string for the value, they're going to be in quotations. This is going to be a red belt. To add more values, just comma, separate them. So the next one is going to be Ryu and Ryu is going to be a black belt. So we'll put black in for the value. So now we have this ninja underscore belts dictionary. So it returns that dictionary to us when we call it. OK, cool. So what if we want to retrieve the value of one of the elements in the dictionary, one of the keys? Well, we can use square bracket notation to do that. So we can say ninja belts, first of all, square brackets, then whatever key we want to find the value to. So I'm going to pass in crystal again. It's going to be in quotes. So crystal. And this should return red, which it does. Likewise, I can do a Ryu and it returns black. OK, but what if I try and access something that's not in the dictionary, like Yoshi? Well, we get an error. So sometimes it's cool to check whether a key actually exists in a dictionary before you try and retrieve it. So how can we do that? Well, we can use something called key in dict, basically. And what this key is going to be is the actual key we're looking for. This is a keyword in Python in, and we're going to look in the dictionary. In this case, it's going to be ninja belts. So we're going to look for Yoshi in ninja belts. So we type Yoshi, it's a string. So we put it in quotations and we say in, and it's ninja underscore belts. And then this returns false because Yoshi is not in ninja belts. But if we tried, for example, Ryu, then we get true because Ryu is in ninja belts. Another way to check the keys in a dictionary to see if something exists is by getting a full list of the keys. And we can do that by saying ninja underscore belts and then use a method called dot keys. So now this is going to return this weird data type called dict keys and we have the keys in there. Now, if we want, we could typecast this into a list by saying list, much like we did with the int typecasting and then pass in the ninja underscore belts and then dot keys. And now we're going to get this as a list, which is much better to work with. OK, we can do the same thing for the values. We can list all of the values in a dictionary and it works pretty much the same. We can say ninja underscore belts dot values. And this returns another weird data type, dict values, with the two different values in there. So again, we can typecast this into a list, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to store this in a list as well, in a variable. So I'm going to say vals equals, then I'm going to say list, because we're using that to typecast, then ninja underscore belts dot values. And now we should have this list stored in vals. Cool. So now it's in a list. We can work with it, like count how many instances there are of a black belt, for example. I could say vals dot count. And that is going to give me, oops, I have not passed in black, stupidly. Um, OK, so that's going to give me how many instances of a black belt are in that list. I could do the same with red. And I could do the same with something that doesn't exist. And that's going to give me zero. OK, so what if we want to add a new ninja to this dictionary? Pretty simple. We use square bracket notation again. So I'm going to say ninja underscore belts. Then the key that we want to add goes in here in quotes. So it's going to be a Yoshi. And then we set that equal to something. So Yoshi is going to have a red belt as well. Now if I press enter and go to ninja belts, this is going to return the updated dictionary with this new key value pair in it. Cool. 
Now, I wanna show you one more thing before we head back to the text editor, and that is an alternate syntax or an alternate way of defining a new dictionary. So say we wanna define a new dictionary, which is a person, and it describes different things about that person. So we'll store this in a variable called person, and before we use these uh, curly braces to create this new dictionary. Now what we're gonna do, and you might see this sometimes, is say dict, and then normal parenthesis, and in here we can specify our key value pairs, but in a slightly different way. So I'll say name is equal to a string, which is Sean, and then age is equal to 27. Now notice 27 doesn't have to be in a string because in this case, it's an integer. This is a string, so it's in double quotes. This doesn't have to be. And finally, we can say height is equal to six foot, and if we press enter and say person, now we have this person dictionary as well, okay? So now I think we know enough to dive back into the text editor and start to create a small program with this. So I'm just gonna exit out of here and clear the console. Okay, so now we kind of understand the basics of dictionaries. I wanna put that to use in some kind of simple example. So what I'm gonna do first of all is create an empty dictionary and I'm gonna call this Ninja Belts. So just setting it equal to this empty dictionary at the minute, nothing in it. Then what I wanna do is give the user the opportunity to enter data to put into this dictionary. So you'll just have to bear with me while I do this, then I can explain it. I'm gonna create a while loop. Now I'm not gonna put an expression that we're gonna evaluate here, I'm just gonna say while true. Now this in essence is gonna create an infinite loop, but what we're gonna do is break out of this loop at certain points. So while true, we're gonna ask the user for a ninja name. So I'll say ninja underscore name is equal to input. And I'll say, enter a ninja name. And then also we're gonna get the ninja belt color. So I'll say ninja underscore belt is equal to input. And I'll say, enter a belt color. Okay. And then what I wanna do is assign this data to this dictionary. So we have a name, which is the key, and the belt, which is the value. So what I can do is say ninja underscore belts, which is this empty dictionary at the minute. Then we're gonna add something to this. Now we can do that using the square bracket notation. And remember, we add the key in these square brackets. And the key is the name, so ninja underscore name. And we're gonna set that equal to the color of the belt, so ninja underscore belt and then we've added that item, that key value pair to this dictionary. Make sense? All right, so now the user might want to add another belt. So we're gonna give them that opportunity. We're gonna ask them if they want to add another. So I'll say another, this is the variable name and set it equal to input. And then I'll say in here, add another and they can answer yes or no. All right, so then what I wanna do is check whether they've entered yes or no. So I'll say if another equals y, then what we're gonna do is continue through this loop. And remember what continue does is say, okay, we'll go back to the top of the loop and start again. Okay, so if they enter yes, we're gonna go back to the top of the loop and we're gonna get them to enter another name and another belt and then add that other data to the dictionary as well. And if they don't, else, if they don't enter yes, what we're gonna do is break out of this loop. Okay, so even though we've put true here, and this would cause an infinite loop otherwise, we're manually breaking out of this if they enter N or any other letter other than Y, okay? So it's not gonna cause that infinite loop. It's only gonna keep going round for as long as they say Y, yes, they do want to add another ninja. All right then, so now we've done that, what I wanna do is create a function that is gonna cycle through this dictionary after they click no. So once they've entered all the ninjas that they want to enter and they click no, we break out of the loop. Then I wanna create a function that we're gonna call, which is gonna cycle through what the user has entered into this dictionary. And this function is basically gonna output some introductions from these ninjas. So let's define this function, def, and then the function is gonna be called ninja underscore intro. And it's gonna take a dictionary in. So I'll say dict or dictionary. And this dictionary is gonna be this thing right here later on. But for now, what we're gonna do is create this function first of all. So we're gonna cycle through this dictionary. 
So to do that, I'm going to use a for loop. And I can say for, and with dictionaries, what we can do is we can cycle through the key and the val, right? So in previous tutorials, when we had a list, we'd say something like this, for ninja in ninjas, right? And that would cycle through a list called ninjas, and each element would be referred to as this singular ninja. Now, this time around, because we're cycling through a dictionary which has key value pairs, we can actually say for key, comma, val, okay? So what we're doing is we're getting the key and the value each time around. We're going through the dictionary, and then we have to say dot items. So that's gonna get the items within the dictionary, and we're gonna cycle through those, okay? So each time around, we're gonna have access to this key and value pair. So what I wanna do is output the key and the value. Remember, the key is the name and the value is the belt color. So I'll print something here, and this is gonna be a formatted string. So this formatted string is gonna say, I am, and then it's gonna output the key, because the key is the name, so we're saying I am whatever name, and I am a val belt, because val is the color. Make sense? Okay, so now we've done this, what we need to do is call this function once we've exited out of this loop. So down here, we'll call the function. We'll say ninja underscore intro, and we're gonna pass through this dictionary, which is being populated throughout this loop. So let's pass it in right there and save it, and let's give this a will. So I'm gonna say python dictionaries.py to run this file. So enter a ninja name, Yoshi, and the color is gonna be black. And add another, yeah. Enter an engine name, crystal. And the color is gonna be red. Add another, yep. Uh, enter an engine name, we'll call him Ryu. And the color is gonna be green. Okay, enter another, no. So now we get I am Yoshi, I'm a black belt, I am crystal, I'm a red belt, I am Ryu, I am a green belt. So cool, this has worked. So there we go, that's a simple example of using a dictionary in Probably not a real life example because we're not going to do this in real life, something so trivial, but how we can use it in our code to cycle through data, how the user can input data, etc. So I hope now dictionaries make a little bit more sense to you. In the next video, we're going to take this one step further and look at sorting.